What up, nerds? My name is Leslie. Welcome to the Nerdy Narrative. Today, I am going to do a book haul. I'm going to showcase all of the books that I have picked up, books that I was sent or gifted. I just wanted to share those with you so you know what's going to be coming up soon on the channel. So if they've been on your radar, you'll know I'm going to be reading them soon and can tell you my thoughts and opinions, which will hopefully help you make the decision on if it is one you want to read or not. Let's jump into this book haul with one I was sent by the author I was so excited to get. And only just recently when I was talking about it with my patrons did I realize I was quoted on the back of, for the first time in print, a mini tale. These are two starter stories for this cosmic fantasy serial I've been reading online. All of you can read it online. It's completely free. It's called a mini tale.com and it features a mouseling named Opaline. Opaline was inspired by Mouse Guard and Redwall. What began as an improv writing exercise has turned into so much more. The author, John Jacob White, just was absolute genius in how he chose to go about this exercise. He chose cosmic fantasy and it's centered around Opaline, who is a mouseling that blips between time space. He's cursed to do this for eternity. We don't know. He never knows how long he's going to be in a certain place or time, except for this spinning top that he has and slows down as his time winds down there. But it always seems he finds himself in a situation where he's driven to help. Because he blips between time and space, creatively, that just gives the author limitless options. It can be steampunk, it can be science fiction, it can be fantasy, it can be western, it can be horror, just it's a fantastic series. There's a new episode released every week on aminitale.com, but this is the first time there's been anything in print and I hope it leads to eventually all of them being in print. But I'm on the back, I'm quoted. Can you see it right here? And it's autographed. I am so proud of this. The next two I picked up from my used bookstore, which is the Book Rack in Ocoee, Florida. That's a first. Used books with no smell at all. Usually they have a really bad one. No smell. The only smell I got was from the fan. I have on like strawberry chapstick and I smell the strawberries. But what do I have here? I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Unfortunately, the first volume is the new cover after it was apparently adapted to a movie. I much prefer the cover on the second one, uh, which is called Hollow City. But these were standing up on top of one of the sections I was looking at and I was drawn to this one. And when I picked it up and realized it was book two, I figured this must be book one. But I read the back. A mysterious island, an abandoned orphanage, and I was sold, but I kept going. A strange collection of peculiar photographs. It all waits to be discovered in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, an unforgettable novel that mixes fiction and photography in a thrilling reading experience. And so I noticed there were pictures here and I kind of looked through some of them and they looked properly creepy. And recently I read a short story by Jacob Stephen Moore called 1855, where way back in those days, how they would get pictures of children. The mom would like be wearing like a black cloak or something like that that covered her up and then they would just put the kid in her lap. Super creepy. And so when I saw that, I just had to have these two. Next off the pile, Bitter Sun by Beth Lewis finally made its way to me. I had to get a copy from the UK. This one was a little hard to get my hands on. This one I picked up because it came highly recommended to me by my friend Penny. There's a faint odor there. It all started when we found the body then nothing was ever the same again. And it looks like this child is standing outside of a cornfield and ugh, cornfields are so creepy. I did one of those at a carnival with my best friend a few years back. I won't be doing that again. The next two off the stack are by the same author, Ronald McGilvery, who was generous enough to send me a copy of these beautiful books in print. I had picked both of them up off my Kindle because one of my reviewing friends 
have read Tales from the Parkland or had started reading it and really liked it. So I had to get in on that. I have read all 10 of the short stories from Tales from the Parkland. I still have the novella in the back to read, which by the time you're watching this, I will have read it and you've probably heard about it in a weekly reading wrap up video. There's a little line here on the front that says stories for late at night. If you love horror, but you can't read it at night, but sometimes you take a chance and read it at night, don't take that chance here. Don't read these at night. They're properly creepy. Now I have not yet read James's Journey to Dreamland, but it will be read very soon. James is an ordinary boy, except for the fact that he can't sleep. That all changes the night a magical train comes through his bedroom closet. Follow James's adventures through Dreamland as he learns an important life lesson at every stop. Oh, that's gonna be so cute. I just love, love, love the cover. And look at the little puppy with the boy. Yep, that's gonna be fun. Next off the pile is Riley Sager's The Last Time I Lied. This will be the first one I have read by this author. I do have some more books by him on my shelf. I just haven't read them yet. We'll see if they get moved up in priority once I read this one. Yet another with no smell. Two truths and a lie. Vivian, Natalie, Allison, and Emma played it all the time at Camp Nightingale. I've actually never heard of that game, but I'm assuming you make three comments. Two of them are true and one of them is a lie. The games ended the night Emma sleepily watched the others sneak out of the cabin into the darkness. The last that she or anyone saw of them was Vivian closing the cabin door, hushing Emma with the finger pressed to her lips. Now a rising star in the New York art scene, Emma turns her past into paintings, massive canvases filled with dark gnarled branches that cover ghostly shapes and white dresses. When the paintings catch the attention of the wealthy owner of Camp Nightingale, Francesca implores Emma to return to the newly reopened camp as an art instructor. Wouldn't she like to put the past to rest? Now, while I would nope right out, it's a trope that I love. So I am excited to read this one. I just have a feeling I'm gonna love it. I think I'm gonna love Riley Sager. Now, a lot of my friends that I share a similar taste with seem to really like him. So I feel like he's gonna be a hit for me. Now, next up is a treasure. And it is The Jade Setter of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee. I got the limited edition autograph numbered subterranean press copy here. And I got it without having read the trilogy. I've not read the Greenbone Saga trilogy yet. So I took a risk here, but again, a lot of my friends that I share the same taste in books with love the Greenbone Saga. Now, even my friends where we don't have a whole lot of books in common seem to love the series. So it seems to be widely appreciated. So I feel pretty good about it. Plus when this one went on sale, I think it was close to Christmas. So I had Christmas money to spend and well, why not on a limited edition book? Next up, you guys have seen on the channel already Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King. This is the collection we're currently working on. Jake over at The Bookish Drummer hosts a Stephen King short story read along. Depending on length, we read one to two short stories a week and then we talk about it and rank them. You know, usually Stephen King books smell really good. They're not even all from the same press. They're from different presses, but man, the paper they use, no luck here. Okay, am I just gonna be completely disappointed? Well, we've got a few more, let's see what happens. Next was a gift to me from my friend Evie from the channel She Was Only Evie. I saw her talking in one of the bookish discords that she was interested in this one and really wanted to read it, so I pre-ordered it for her. Redwood and Wildfire by Andrea Harrison. And then the sequel comes out in September that we will be reading it together. Maybe my nose just isn't working. No, I can smell my strawberry chapstick, but I'm not getting any smells from these pages. Nope. This one caught my interest because it has something to do with hoodoo. I love anything to do with the hoodoo culture. I don't know why. I have been fascinated with it ever since I was a child. And all the times that I go to New Orleans, I just cannot get enough of the culture there. I've done all of the tours. I've taken all of the classes. 
I just love it. I think this is going to be an amazing historical fiction story. I also have the feeling I'm going to really, really love the writing style of Andrea Harrison. Holy smokes, I could not begin to tell you what this means to me. This book, Glorious Plague by Karen Hewler. Now, you might think, why does that name sound familiar? Well, I recently read Karen Hewler's latest release, The Splendid City. Absolutely loved it. It was the one with the talking cat who liked to drink beer and shoot people. I'll have it linked up in the cards and of course down in the description below. But the author saw the video. I got a hand-picked book for me from an author. I about died. Just about died. She personalized it to me. Right there. Even has my name spelled right. I don't care if people misspell my name. I don't. My name doesn't make sense to be Leslie with a Z. But when folks take the time to actually look at that and they note it, I just can't get over. My brain refuses to compute that the author listened to what I said about a book of hers that I loved and was like, hey, I think I might actually have this other book that I think she would love and send it to me. Like, I'm literally already my life. I am living my dream. I feel like I am at the center of my own fairy tale. I sit here and I get to read books and talk about it and people listen and discuss these books with me and people send books and they want me to read their books and review them when they're about to come out and I'm just like, how does it get any better? And then one that I loved and respect says, hey, I think I have another one you might like. Like no strings attached. Like just. All right, let me tell you what this one is about. All over the country, people are singing. I wonder if I sang in that review because I love to sing. You guys, if you've been around the channel a while, you've heard it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Climbing to the rooftops, to the bridges, to lampposts and road signs, steeple and water tower, singing gloriously, triumphantly, tirelessly, and dying. When it's all over, Manhattan has to rebuild a new society and it seems to be having a lot of help in the form of angels, gods, and walking myths. Who? What's real? And how much does it matter? I love anything to do with myths, gods, angels, Manhattan. I love New York. My husband and I eloped in Central Park. Like, we love New York. Of course, you have the whole singing bit. I'm not good at it, but I love to do it. I'm just freaking over the moon. All right, next one. You guys have seen this one all over the place. Gosh. This is the most beautiful blue cover I've ever seen. It's very simple. I like the UK cover the best, but this blue though, my gosh, you cannot see this and not know immediately what it is. In fact, when I unboxed it, I ordered this, I pre-ordered it from Barnes and Noble at the beginning of the year when they were doing this 25% off all your pre-orders. When I opened the box and pulled it out, Chris immediately goes, Hey, that's Upgrade. He said, I've seen that book advertised on some of my feeds. He's like, I'd recognize that blue anywhere. So that's kind of cool. This one, I don't even know what it's about. I don't care. It's by Blake Crouch. Everything that I have read by Blake Crouch, I have loved. Now, some of my friends have kind of been middle of the road on this one that I've seen so far and reviews going up. So I'll be curious to see what I think. I'm not going to read anything about it. I'm just going to read it soon, go in blind, and just see what happens. Now, this next book I picked up is the fault of my friend Andreas. Andreas linked that this book was on sale in Discord, and a lot of us had to pop over onto Amazon and pick it up. No smell. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, that must have really been on a huge sale. No, it wasn't that big of a sale, but it's a beautiful book. It has all kinds of interesting quotes, chapter headers. There are illustrations. There's just so much beauty added to this book that just makes the reading experience even better in my opinion. I have wanted a copy of this book ever since my friend Steve Talks Books showed it on his channel. And in addition to the fact that it has all of this beautiful artwork in it, the book is good too. I'm very excited. I believe I've seen the author on Twitter talking about being hard at work on book two. It maybe even got sent to editing recently. So I am very excited to read that one and just experience each of those pages with all of their beauty. I just can't wait. This next trilogy, I cried 
when I opened the box, well, no, I didn't cry immediately because when I first opened the box, I didn't know what it was. So one day I walked down to the mailboxes to check the mail and I had this box that I received. It said media mail. It didn't have a return address on there that I found. And so I thought, okay, so they're books. I didn't know who they were from. And I thought, did I order books and forget? That's not, that is like me. That is like me. I'm, <laughs> I was about to lie. I was about to lie. Anyway, so I open it up. So when I first opened the box, there's bubble wrap. I can see that there are books, but I didn't immediately recognize them. And I'm thinking, what's going on? Come to find out, it was the Risen Kingdom trilogy sent to me by my friend Kate. I about die. If you've watched any recent videos on this channel, you have heard me talk about an alchemy of mask and mirrors so many times. I know y'all are probably getting tired of it, but this book was so good. So good. I loved it so much. And it was one I initially in chapter one, I thought this book and I are not going to make it. I'm not going to make it past chapter one. That's how rough it started for me. I thought I'm not even going to make it past the first chapter. I'm going to give it one chapter. And wow, did it turn around in that one chapter. They're so beautiful. And oh my gosh, so I'm one of those that I flip through all the pages. I read the dedications. I'm one of those weirdos. I look to see when it was published, who it was published by, when it was originally published. It was, I'm just so weird like that. So I get to opening these books up and I had read the sticky note that Kate had included, but I was so overwhelmed with the fact that she sent me this trilogy that I feel is going to be one of my favorites of all time. I mean, Alchemy of Mask and Mirrors is definitely one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. I was completely overwhelmed. I could not understand the words that I was reading, what she meant, until I started opening up these books. Y'all, she got every one of these books autographed, personalized to me from the author. He was at a convention that she was able to go to and she got them all signed. So now I have one of my favorite books of all time signed, personalized to me by the author. Like I'm just, my cheeks hurt from all of the smiling that has just been happening. Overwhelmed. These books are just flipping gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Just thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone who has ever taken, like, money is so hard to come by. And ever since the pandemic, everything, costs have risen, but pay has not, you know, and the fact that people are spending their discretionary income, their book budgets to send me something is just like, I'm just completely I don't know how to say thank you properly. I am not an author that has the words, the words that just properly convey this. So let's end this with the last trilogy and the book blame for it firmly lands on the shoulders of my friend Twainy. Uh, she got this series and she posted a picture on her Instagram and I was like, oh my word, I have to have it. Now the Mr. Mercedes trilogy is one that I have planned to be reading by Stephen King this year. So I would have been getting the books one by one to read that trilogy because I believe Stephen King is going to have a novel simply titled Holly after a character who I want to say this is where we first meet Holly Gibney. Now I'm from Mississippi. We do things backwards. I read about, I read her short story and if it bleeds, which spoiled the book, the outsider. So I immediately read the outsider, which spoils this trilogy. And so now I'm going to read this trilogy, at least for Holly, I'll be reading that one last and in the right order. So at least I'm going to end where I'm supposed to, but this printing is just so cool. Like I just had to have that. And then the back, I don't know what the ice cream truck or the smiley faces means yet, but we'll find out. Ooh, that smells like dried urine. <laughs> oh, mistakes were made. The second one is Finders Keepers. We got this creepy tree on the back. And then the last one here is End of Watch. And we've got, it looks like an old Game Boy on the back. So I am so excited to read those. I have an amazing 
haul. Thank you so very much for being here today. I hope you enjoyed this book haul and seeing the books you're going to be hearing me talk about in the upcoming months here on The Nerdy Narrative. I appreciate any of you who are responsible for sending me these gorgeous books to adorn the shelves behind me and not only take up a slot on my bookshelf but also space in my heart with all of the beautiful stories that I get to experience. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one.